Who has time to Marie Kondo this shit? So here's where we're starting today. Does any of this sound familiar to you? (laughs) I'm ashamed that my outside doesn't match my inside. Visualizing anything, let alone computer files, is difficult. I keep slapping band-aids on my systems. I'm afraid to let anyone really help me with daily work. It just sounds like a lot of time that I don't have right now. And my favorite one that I've ever heard, these are real quotes. <laughs> my favorite one to this day is here at the bottom. Who has time to Marie Kondo this shit? <laughs> and the truth is, if you are feeling any of these things, even if you haven't voiced them quite as eloquently as all of these statements, you are so not alone. That is the point. These are things that I have heard from real people um, who've come through the programs here inside of Sensible Woo. And they're they're actually amazingly common statements. Um, you know, I have people at all varying degrees of making commitments to programs. And even if it's um, still not time yet, they'll say a lot of these phrases as well. So wherever you are in your journey, just know first and foremost that you are not alone. I think that's one of the most important things um, that helps us feel more centered and grounded that, you know, we can be a member of a community where we're learning skills and learning how to do things. But to know that people before you have already said these things lets you know that it's okay to be on the journey. It's okay to be on the path. And that actually it's a really good sign that you're in the right place. So um, maybe you have some other phrases (laughs) that also sound familiar to you. And if you do, you can add them to the Q&A discussion forum here inside Podia. I would love to hear what are some of your phrases that you keep saying about your world and systems and time and energy and feeling like, you know, either whether you're putting band-aids on things or you're like, you know, that sounds amazing, but I just don't have the time for that. I don't even know where I would find the time. Um, Those are things that are actually really achievable. It's actually really easy to find the time, believe it or not. And we're going to find some time for you today before we're done. Hopefully it will help alleviate some of your stress. So first we'll talk about alignment. So if you're here, it's usually because you've clearly seen the disconnect between your public image and your behind the scenes operations. This is really common when we get into scale and growth mode. Um, We're not a baby business anymore. And what happens is, is we have a pretty good brand, public facing brand. People know who we are. It's pretty clear to see what we're doing. Even though we're growing and getting better at our offers, um, it's still pretty clear. We're not in what we call offer market fit stage where we're still kind of figuring out who do I serve? What are they getting from me? Um, we've, We've actually offered a few things or more than that. And behind the scenes, because things are growing so quickly, a lot of files are being created. It's a lot of email. That's always one of the big ones. Your calendar might be out of control. Um, And you might also be working with people for the first time in a while, or maybe you've had someone like a virtual assistant inside the back end of your business. And so behind the scenes, you know, there's the handoffs are not smooth. You dig for a lot of files. You dig for emails. You feel like you're always playing catch up. That's a disconnect between publicly looking really pretty on Instagram and behind the scenes having not such a pretty picture. You might also be trying to scale your business and understand that your systems are not in alignment with your vision. So if you have some awareness about systems, sometimes people come into my world and this is the first time they've ever heard about systems. They didn't know that they could get help with this. They're like, oh my goodness, I didn't even know this was a thing. But you might come into here and you, you know, you've heard about this. You know what it is. Um, and, and when you know that your systems are not in alignment with your vision, when you have that awareness point, it can actually be a bit of a heavier burden on your heart because you know that there's something that could help you. There's, you know, that there's something you could do, but you haven't done it yet. And so sometimes those, 
those um, self-judgy kind of thoughts and feelings will come into your your space throughout the day and you'll feel like, you know, I should have done this if only I had. Um, and just know that this is a place where you can put that down. You've probably been carrying that package for a long time and you can you can put that down and you can just leave it. You don't even have to do anything with it. Um, my people will take care of it for you. <laughs> so put that down and just know that now is the time. And also in alignment, if you're here, you're most likely building a legacy. So your business baby is officially growing up. You have people who love what you put out into the world and you're doing really, really amazing things. You're making an impact. So it means that you probably want to be around more than like a year or two. And in that case, you're going to need some systems that are going to help you be more, um, just more efficient and more productive and make it easier for you to continue, you know, bringing that legacy into the world. You also genuinely want to learn about a new way of approaching your digital world and life and business. I find this is the last piece of alignment that really brings people into the Sensible Woo community is that you feel like you're ready. Um, sometimes feeling like we're ready for some people comes earlier than for others. And just know that wherever you're at on your path, that you're at the right place where you need to be right now. The one thing that you want to make sure is that you're not getting stuck in any particular part of the path. So if you genuinely want to learn and you know it's time and you've been you know putting those band-aids on there and it's really chaotic behind the scenes and you know it feels out of alignment with what you're putting out into the world eventually that kind of stuff catches up with you and when the systems aren't taken care of when the digital feng shui has not been done it can make things actually move slower it can um, make you turn down you know perfectly good job opportunities and that's what we want to avoid so if you are starting to get that business CEO level anxious feeling about it, then that would be a good point to make a decision. Maybe it's time to work inside of systems. Um, now, if you're having a lot of just general emotional anxiety, it's really good to kind of check in with this alignment piece here and start to separate, okay, where in that anxiety, in that anxiety is it related to specifically business operations and what part of it has to do with that emotional component where you feel shame, guilt, um, you know, you're normally an A student and you feel like you're a C plus student at the moment, um, anything like that, you know, it's good to separate those feelings out so that you know where your business is honestly doing well and where maybe you know, this is time for you to catch up to it, you know, and, and there are multiple ways that you can do this. My system is one of many that are out there in the world, but if you like what you see, then I'll show you ways that you can, um, go deeper into this. So if we haven't met before, welcome. My name is Mary and I am the chief technology therapist here at Sensible Woo. So for those of you who haven't met me before, I am a librarian by trade. I have my master's of science and in information from the University of Michigan. And I started my career doing really cool things with cool brands, like being the digital archivist for Disney animation, which was cool. And I also worked for marketing companies. I've worked for startups. I've also been the tech director for for public libraries. And all of those experiences have helped me mesh these two worlds together. Because while I was doing this big corporate career, I was also a blogger making money. So I had my entrepreneurial journey. I had a side hustle. And I also was reading tarot cards and the Akashic Records for clients on, on the evenings and weekends. And um, as I was doing readings for clients, I started to discover that they had a lot of systems related questions that they would sort of throw into a, a, a question in their tarot and Akashic session. And I knew I said, I don't need cards for this answer. Like we need to talk about your software behind the scenes. And it showed me that um, there was a space where those two areas meet. And this is the system that came out of it. So I'm really hoping that it jives with you as well. If you are typically um, drawn to energy systems, um, more holistic ways of working and operating inside of your business, this system will probably feel a lot better to you when it comes to technology and um, operations behind the scenes. It's less um, heavy on the tech and a lot more heavy on the emotions and our own personal rhythms and seasons. 
So what is Sensible Woo? So here in Sensible Woo, we are many things. It's a place where you can be emotional and you can be technical at the same time. It's a place where you can definitely be intuitive and you can also be an expert and a novice at the same time. We can be all of these things at the same time. You know, just because I'm an expert in information systems doesn't mean that I'm not a novice in other areas, you know, and we can be intuitive all the time in our businesses, which is an area I see um, gets talked about a lot by some entrepreneurs or completely left off the table by others. We talk about making gut decisions all the time but here at sensible woo i like to put the sensible with the woo woo we we put our sensible practical hats on and we talk about strategy and um real operations you know that would make a vision possible in the real world we're not just envisioning we are actually doing um but we also honor the messages that come to us through our gut, through our, you know, higher channels, however it is that you feel it. Um, a lot of times we know answers inside of our business and they need to be honored. Otherwise, they kind of eat up our, our energy and our space. Here, most importantly, we are technical and emotional at the same time. I believe that technology is not devoid of emotion. A lot of times we'll think about it um, in the wider world as something that's sort of robotic, like it's cold, it doesn't have emotion. And I argue that technology is highly emotional because we are humans and we make our decisions based on emotional feelings. And therefore our technology also responds in kind. So um, we operate in a very holistic sense, as you can see here at Sensible Woo. We also harness energy of things like lunar phases. So I really believe in paying attention to the new moons and the full moons and what phase they're in. And um, is that a blue moon of the month? You know, there's there's a lot of things happening astrologically and the moon phases actually really impact us. We also flow again with the energy of astrological events. So Mercury retrograde, for example, is a really big thing here because Mercury, the planet, rules communication and technology which are big, big components of business operations. And um, about three times a year-ish, Mercury goes into what's called retrograde. And for those of you who don't know, retrograde doesn't mean that a planet actually moves backward. It's just that in the heavens, it appears to move backwards. But during those like two to three week time periods when Mercury goes retrograde, it's a time when our technology honestly operates a little a little funky. <laughs> I'm recording this presentation during a Mercury retrograde, and I'll tell you that the software has been acting really weird today. Um, and I, I typically hear more anxiety and um, calls for help during Mercury retrograde around tech issues than any other time. Um, it's not that our tech doesn't go go bad on us, out, you know, outside of Mercury retrograde, because it certainly does. But, um, but there are also ways to deal with these astrological events. You know, I look at them kind of like our natural seasons, like spring, summer, fall and winter. And when Mercury comes up, it's a seasonal change. And it's a time for us to slow down It's a time for us to reflect. It's a time for us to revise things to really review what it is that we are doing in our business operations. It's kind of like um, the energetic seasons know that we kind of need a break. <laughs> we need just a little bit of time to put on our CEO hats and and work in our businesses, work on them, take care of them, and come out of Mercury retrograde with a lot better strategy and a much clearer picture of what's actually happening. And then there's also major life seasons. Each of us has our own life seasons where we're going through a variety of things, whether it's births or deaths or relationships, beginning or ending or anything. There's all kinds of things that happen in our lives and we have to pay attention to those seasons. They can make our seasons short or long. They can be collective seasons. Like in 2020, we've all been dealing with quarantine and a pandemic around the coronavirus. And so we're all in a collective season. Everyone's experiencing a little bit differently, just like everyone would experience winter in the snow a little bit differently. Some people are very comfortable. Some people are very uncomfortable. And then there's a wide variety in the middle. The same thing happens in collective seasons. And the same thing happens in your, your own life. You know, um, you might go through a season where you're growing really fast. 
you know, and then you might have seasons where things are just feel really slow. Some of them are pleasant. Some of them are unpleasant, but we pay attention to them. And more importantly, we use a system like this that helps us honor those seasons. So we're not pushing things through based on someone else's modality or someone else's time frame or someone else's formula. You know, we're really making it customized for you. So speaking of customization and, you know, working on things for you, the first thing is to get grounded. And this bit with the chakras is something I talk about a lot here because it's, it's so important that we talk about what are you doing in the root system of your business. So if you are new to the chakras, you can use this diagram here to help you kind of get oriented. And you can see on the figure that these colored dots, you can think of this line almost like your spine. So what happens is um, the chakras start down here at the root. This is actually number one, two, three, four, five, and so forth. There are seven of them. And we're actually going to start in this explanation up here at the crown. So the crown is kind of like where you see this big bun on top of my head here today. And what I find is a lot of entrepreneurs, whether they're woo woo or not, <laughs> they are hit with the moment of inspiration and that inspiration comes in through the crown chakra. It's, it's a point when, um, you are connected to your divine guidance because that is where your crown chakra, it goes up to your divine guidance. And so this, this inspiration drops in and if you acknowledge it and you welcome it in, the energy will begin to grow. It'll start to drop into your body. And so it drops down into the third eye and right between your eyes is your third eye on your forehead. And when you, when the energy drops into the third eye region, you can start visioning what is happening in this inspiration that you've come to accept. And it starts to get kind of exciting. You know, like you can actually see a vision of, I could see myself, you know, doing this forever, or I could see myself building that company and selling it, or I could see myself doing something, you know, and making an impact. And then as you acknowledge that vision, it drops down into your throat region. And in your throat region, just as you know, it's where our vocalizations come from, you start developing language, you can start communicating about this inspiration that you've had. And what happens is as you develop language, you can start describing it better, you can start telling people about what you saw in your vision. And as you put that out into the world, you can start getting feedback. And so people start telling you, you know, what they think about your idea, they validate your idea. And as you get that validation, the energy grows and it drops down into your heart. And your heart centers when you start getting all the good, the good feels, <laughs> things feel really warm and fuzzy. You get really excited and, um, you know, you really start to, you know, feel like I've, I've met the one I've met my business idea. Like I, I this feels so good. I don't want to not do it. <laughs> and so as you develop those feelings and your heart center grows, um, with the, um, inspiration that's come in that energy then drops down into your solar plexus region right here. And so your solar plexus in the chakra system is the center of your personal power. And it's also not a coincidence that in biology, they're now saying that our guts, our actual guts, like our intestines, can be considered like a second brain because of the microbiome system in it and the way our bodies function. So it's not a coincidence that as this energy drops down and hits our solar plexus region, which is the center of our personal power, our second brain, that we hit our mindset issues. This is usually the point where we're feeling all the good feels and then the energy drops down and now we start thinking, I have imposter syndrome. Like, who am I to do this? Who would ever buy this from me? Like, I, I'm, I'm such a small fish in such a big pond. Um, and as you work through those mindset issues, the energy finally starts to free up again and it flows down into your sacral region. And your sacral region is the center of your creative energy. And so as you work through those mindset issues, you free up the energy to flow more lightly, more freely. And in your sacral region is where you start creating things like branding and marketing. You know, you might make a website, you might start a podcast, something, you know, but you, you create a lot of stuff, 
a lot of stuff gets created. And this this inspiration point up here suddenly starts looking like a real business entity down here. And it's got some legs coming on it. Um, it's got a body to it. And as you develop all of that and put it out into the world, the energy continues to build. It gets really heavy and it drops into your root. Now your root, just like the name would suggest, has to do with how you are rooted in this life. So in your chakras, in your chakra regions, the root chakra has to do with things like, you know, inherited beliefs you pick up from your family, um, things you pick up from your ancestral line. It's it's the basis of how you identify in this world, how you function in this world. Um, and it often comes with a lot of things that need healing, to be frankly honest. And the same thing happens in our business. By the time the energy drops down into the root, it's time to dig in and do the work. So at this point, think of it kind of like a beautiful flowering rose bush. I happen to live in the Pacific Northwest and roses are a really big thing up here. The climate's perfect for them. So when you see a beautiful rose on a bush, think of the rose, the bloom itself as your pieces of marketing. That's your branding. It's your offers. It's the stuff you put out into the world. It's the stuff that catches people's eyes. You know, it. we, we see a rose and we want to take a picture on our phone or try to smell it. You know, we want to engage with it. And so think about your own content in the same way. But that rose is attached to a bush. <laughs> and that bush, it doesn't exist without roots and soil. And in your business, your systems are the roots and the soil. So as you think about, okay, if I'm going to get my roses to bloom again next season, I'm going to have to take care of the roots and the soil. And it gets a little messy. You got to get down on your knees. You got to dig around in the dirt. You know, you might get a little dirty. Um, and you know, and as you're getting dirty, you're, you're making the bush healthier. You know, you're making sure that it is planted where it needs to be planted, that it's getting enough water, that has enough nutrients, you know, in the soil. And you're doing the same thing in your business. You're finally doing the work. And so what happens is I hear a lot from people in the entrepreneurial community. They get the point of inspiration that comes in and they start seeing a little bit of a vision. They go, oh, I've, I've answered my calling. I've answered it. But that's not entirely true. That's just inspiration. And so that inspiration has to drop and become a thing and you have to do the work. And when you do the work, all the nutrients from the roots in the soil come back up and make those, those rows um, buds bloom into a full rose. And the same thing happens in your energy. The energy can then bloom. And when it blossoms, it cycles back up through your kundalini. It hits your crown chakra again. And that is when you answer your calling. Until you've done the root work, you're not really answering your calling. You're just kind of stuck here you know, trying to make the energy flow and it feels hard and it's just not doing exactly what you want it to do. So once you start working in your root, this energy can actually start flowing in your business. And it's how you can then pop back up to collect more inspiration that's attached to the original nugget that came to you. And then you do the work and then you get more, more inspiration. You know, this is why when you see entrepreneurs who are producing really great offers, you're like, how do they do it? It's because they are doing the work and they might have help and you might eventually have help too if you don't already. But the point is, is that they spend time in the root. If you don't spend time in the root, this whole energy structure collapses. The same thing's true of your own body. If you don't deal with your root chakra region, your body, the, the energy systems in your body don't hold up. So, um, so hopefully this metaphor here helps you as you um, consider what's really happening in the energy systems of your business. So now we'll talk about feng shui because this system is born out of physical feng shui, which is a Chinese system. It utilizes spatial arrangement and orientation, and it's related to the flow of energy. We call it qi. And depending on how you use your pinyin, it could be a qi or a chi in our romanized um, alphabet. But qi is energy. And um, like you can think of martial arts like tai chi. And what they're doing is they are meditating with their energy. They're building their energy up. So feng shui is used in the siting and designing of buildings, 
um, in Asia, but is also used to harmonize individuals with their surrounding environment. Here in Western culture, we typically have um, like feng shui practitioners who will come into our homes. They might change the paint colors in a room or rearrange the furniture, add in elements um, from, you know, like earth, air, fire, water. They might add in some elements into the home to make the energy flow more. And based on the year, the dial placement for feng shui changes um, because the compass changes every year. So um, it's very similar to astrology, but very much rooted in um, like your physical systems in life. And so in feng shui, there's a thing called a bagua map. And ba is is the number eight in in Chinese. And, and so traditionally, it looks like this. It's an octagon. And that's where the ba comes from, bagua. And, and so you'll have your directions here. Um, but in the Western tradition, we've simplified it as we tend to do with things. And we made it into a rectangle or a square, um, which is easier to compute in this sense. And so when I was playing with the Bagua map one time for my physical home, I looked at it and I said, you know, this thing really reminds me of areas in business. And as I played with it, I discovered that they sure do. The first one that popped out was fame and reputation. And as you'll see in a moment, it has to do with our marketing systems. So we're going to walk through the Bagua applied to our digital world. So everything in your computer, all of your digital marketing, websites, all of that, um, it's all in here. And what I have discovered is that... Um, a lot of holistic based entrepreneurs find it really, really useful to have a physical um, and visual medium to help, um, you know, ground what it is that's happening inside the computer. Because, you know, one of the traditional things I hear is, you know, I close the lid on my laptop and I don't know what's happening in there. It's just a bunch of stuff. It's electronic stuff. And for whatever reason, my strange brain computes computer things really easily. And so this is my way of helping you also wrap your brain around the needs that you have related to your systems. So in digital feng shui, I want you to start thinking of your computer as your digital house. I want you to think of your cloud drives as part of your digital house. Everything that happens in your online business is part of this digital house. And we have our own Bagua map. So I've adapted it to create areas for us to review. We start in the middle and then we go down and around like a clock and we'll walk through them in a moment. So you can see how, you know, we still have our, our eight sides. And I kept the Western tradition of keeping a central module in the middle because in the middle it's us. It's yourself. Um, your foundation is really, really important because without you in this picture, it doesn't really mean a whole lot. So that's where we're going to start today. We're going to start with foundation. And your foundation is simply put the way you work. It's your action plans. It's your habits and routines. It's how you function. Traditionally, this section in the middle is your health and well-being. So when you think about it, you know, how, how interesting. In On a physical Bagua map for the home, the center is health and well-being. And so when we put ourselves as the health and well-being center of our businesses, it really, you know, sort of puts a, a, a different mindset shift on it um, that without our own health and well-being, without having a strong foundation to operate from every day, we don't have a strong um, harmonized energy inside of our business. And then as we come down the map and go around, we're going to do our systems. Traditionally, this was career and work success. That is a section of the home or the structure. And in your systems, we're really talking about how you get stuff done. We're talking about mobile devices. So they might actually be physical items like a computer desktop. It could also be in, and this is a big term, business systems. So it could also be, um, you know, other pieces of software that you use. You'll notice as we go around the clock that there's some overlap between some of these areas. And I did that on purpose because 
overall, we are all these things all the time, all together. And just like operating through actual life, physical life, everything is not so segmented or siloed. And so what you might find is that one, one area of your Bagua or even inside your physical home, one area kind of correlates to the other. Um, and, and that's how our energy works. So, um, let's move forward and look at inventory. Inventory is the next section coming up And traditionally, this is growth and self-improvement here. I've made it inventory because inventory, by doing inventory, you achieve more growth and improvement in your business than any other template or tool that I have in this whole program. Because when you know what you have, you can then make decisions on what to do next. I find a lot of entrepreneurs are struggling to make decisions on what to do next because it turns out they don't really know what they have. And that's a problem because if you don't really know what you're spending, if you don't really know what software you have, if you don't really know how old your equipment is, it's going to be really hard to make a decision on scaling and growing and being more innovative. And so in your inventory, we tackle things like hardware and software updates. We do full assessments. We um, look at all your tools, all your assets, assets in the um, in the technical sense, technology sense means things like your digital information files, your intellectual property, and all these things we need to keep track. We need to know where they're at. So that is the inventory section. And then that flows up into your focus. So we've come down around and over here. So in your focus, this was traditionally family, you know, and just like in real life, a lot of my uh, entrepreneurs in the community um, are family people and, you know, they care very much and family gives them focus. Um, you know, family is a way to, you um, you know, have a really big why, like you really want your kids to have a better life <laughs> than yours even. And, and that brings incredible clarity and focus to a great many people. Um, family can mean whatever it means to you. So family might be something else for you, but your focus is the thing that brings you your why. And it's where your energy really goes. Sometimes we forget that if our focus is off, our energy is still going that area. And if our focus is off, it begs the question, what is your energy doing? What is it supporting? Is it being utilized as effectively as it could? It um, Focus gives us our time and attention. Focus also involves things, feelings like trusting technology. You know, if, the, if there's mistrust there, the focus will be off. Um, focus also involves utilizing automation because when we let our technology tools do what they were meant to do um, and set them up properly to do what they were meant to do, it allows us to do things like automate processes so we don't have to do everything so manually. And then that helps bring us, again, additional focus and clarity. Next up, we have our innovations. So when you have focus, you can flow easily into innovations because when you have focus, you have the ability to be creative. And traditionally, the innovation section was power and wealth. And I find that with entrepreneurs, being innovative is one of the most powerful things that we can do. It's also usually one of the most um, related things to how we grow our wealth or our revenue or however it is you look at wealth in your world. So your innovations includes new ideas and methods, being able to see new ways of doing things, kind of like how I was able to see a new way of building this digital Bagua map. That was, an, that was a huge act out of my innovation section. It also sometimes means that you're an early adopter to technology. And when you are feeling focused and secure and innovative, you're a lot more likely to adopt a tool sooner rather than later, which can help you again grow more. So um, sometimes it also involves status technology, which can add to your branding. And you'll see that show up in the next session section with branding. Um, but sometimes we need to look a certain part. And when you're able to be innovative, you can embrace that a little bit more easily. And innovation is what makes you unique. Um, it's a unique mechanism. It's hard to come up with your unique mechanism when you're just constantly putting fires out and you're not very focused. 
So out of innovations, we flow into your brand, which traditionally is the fame and reputation section. So it's pretty obvious correlation there. <laughs> your brand can include your public persona, things like social media, marketing, PR. Um, it is it is the things, it's the rose on the bush. And in our Bagua map, it's also at the top, you know, when we're looking at it in this diagram, you know, you think of roses being on top of the bush. They're not down on the bottom. They're on the top. And so it's a thing, you know, really makes everything pop. And I find that for most people, the majority of their energy is flowing to the brand area without, um, you know, without realizing it, it just happens. It's a very demanding area of our Bagua maps. It's an area that constantly wants to be in motion. <laughs> it's an area that we feel we have to put the most energy into. But as you'll soon discover working inside the digital feng shui system, when you pay attention to your other sections, your brand will naturally pop in a way that's a lot more concentrated and also a lot more effective for you. So with that will flow next into your security and your security is traditionally love and marriage. So I was thinking partnerships here, um, which also comes up in another section, but in terms of security, you know, you get, um, a feeling of safety when you have, you know, strong relationships in your life, when you feel loved and, you know, in love and marriage can mean different things to different people. So you can apply that however it feels best to you. But here in the digital Bagua map, your security actually involves things like con having control over your intellectual property. So IP stands for intellectual property. Those are the unique things you make, whether it's like an ebook or even, you know, your Instagram post, an original post. Those are all pieces of intellectual property and having proper security and access set up on your intellectual property is what brings you security. We're a asking questions about who really owns your data. Um, I see a lot of people storing very precious intellectual property on third party platforms like Facebook, that tends to be the biggest one. Um, but now also LinkedIn has been creeping up a lot. And what you want to find out is, you know, if you are storing that information there, like you've shared some templates and some files and videos with your, your, you know, your communities, um, and you have not set up proper file systems for yourself and your business, when you're talking about who owns your data, the fact that Facebook can change its rules overnight and keep you from your data means that you don't own your data if you're not backing it up on your systems. So we address things like that here in your security so you don't end up in those oh shit moments because these are things that we call preventable emergencies. We are trying to prevent preventable emergencies. So um, also in your security, you have data storage and retention policies. And this gets into digital archiving and making sure that your files are being built for a legacy. Also being built in a way that you don't have to be in everything all the time. That's how we start to delegate things off our plate is by dealing with things like this. Then we look at your strategy and strategy is traditionally children and creativity. And I love that traditionally children and creativity go in the same section. I think there's something really really lovely about that. Um, and in terms of your strategy, you know, when you have young ones or you're being straight up creative, um, you're really building things for the future. So strategy is about building things for the future. You might have idea files or mind maps, and then also there's straight up, you know, future planning and scalability. Um, and in this section, sometimes we'll birth those like really big ideas or we'll be in flow with something and all of a sudden we'll have like a bunch of other offer <laughs> ideas come out. And what we're trying to do is make sure that we have a place where we can park those things and make them productive instead of bright, shiny objects. And so this section really helps with that. And then we flow down into the final section and we look at support. This is traditionally travel and helpful people. And I love that support correlates with the travel and helpful people because the helpful people part is obvious, but with travel, you know, sometimes we have to go someplace to go get something that we need or to feel like we got that thing that we needed. And sometimes your support 
forces you to do that. So we're doing, you know, talking about building community and networking, you know, going out and meeting people, growing your lead generation, you know, those all kind of fall under support. Um, and tech performance also falls under support, you know, making sure that you have someone who can help you with that. Um, making sure that you have backup so that you're not the only one. If you need a break or you have to take a break, um, you are not then left with that oh shit moment. And you can um, actually continue operating in your business. That is real delegation and automation, which is what we're really trying to achieve here inside of digital feng shui, to do that with great intention and clarity and consciousness instead of simply reacting to circumstances and not necessarily being judicious about our resources. So speaking of automation and delegation, you know, where does that come from? So we looked at the chakras earlier and the root here falls down into the base of the pyramid. You might be thinking Maslow's hierarchy at this point, and this is inspired by that. It's simplified for your business. So in in the triads at the bottom, your big base, you have your systems and support. And on top of that, when you have systems and support strongly supporting the rest of the pyramid, you can then have emotional priorities on top of that. And you can also have connection to your life on top of that. I mean, we're all really hoping to get this connection piece at the top, um, but it doesn't happen without the systems and support. So we work in our root, and then you can see how that also is reflected in the Bagua map. The Bagua map is a direct reflection of all the things that happen here in the base of the pyramid. And what that does is it allows us to then embrace CEO mentality. That's really what we're trying to get at here. We're trying to um, stop working like we are a slave in our business and actually be decision makers. <laughs> and what we're doing is we're, t we're um, making sure that we know what we're investing in transforms unconscious investments into intentional decisions. So again, transforming unconscious investments. So that whole list of investments, instead of doing that unconsciously, turn them every single one into an intentional decision. I am intentionally deciding to spend my emotional energy in this area and I have a plan for it and it's supported and it's possible. You know, those are the things that we're looking for.